in the Ardennes, in the forest, in the mountains, there is this track that's called Spa Francochon. We went to petrol heaven. You were expecting a car, didn't you? Well, hello there and welcome to the Dutch Car Guys. Today we are in Belgium at Spa Francochon to look at some amazing cars and especially the Agile. Come, let's take a look. I'm Roger. My name is Finny. And this is an Agile. This is an Agile SCX. This lightweight, mostly carbon machine has a turbocharged 1.6 liter four cylinder Ford EcoBoost engine. It's available in a 225 and a 270 horsepower version, where the last, with a weight of just below 600 kilos, goes from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just three seconds. And best of all, it's road legal. We had the chance to see and experience this machine at Spa Francorchamps. But first, we went to House of Speed to have a talk with owner and co-founder of Agile Automotive, Tim Hansen. So Tim, you built it. Yes, I did. We started out as, an, and we still are, a carbon fiber company. We are developing carbon fiber parts for motorsport and for other uh, industries. But we've been doing that since 2005. Over the years, we've been building all sorts of parts in carbon fiber. And at some point we start joking about that, but we have actually built a full car in parts. We just never built the car ourselves. And then it started to grow on us and develop. And then back in 15, we started our project that actually was the first step for this car. You were just joking at your work with your colleagues like, yeah, wow. So that was just a joke. We started to talk about it more seriously and said, okay, what the could we actually do this and, yeah. and how should we do it? For many years, we've been very happy about working together with the engineering students. At some point, I had an Italian guy calling me and said, if I had a motorsport carbon fiber project, I said, mm. yeah, actually, we, it could be interesting to look into making a monocoque. We had a meeting with him and he was all in. He wanted to do it and said, but it's, it's a huge project, this one, so you should find a partner to do it with. And uh, he found a guy from Spain. Uh, they were both starting in Copenhagen. They started up and they did a great job. They developed backbone of the car, the carbon fiber monocoque. And they spent half a year on their final thesis, did the design of it, did a lot of work on testing the carbon fiber to see how strong and stiff it was, and it did a full design with our materials, with our... With your technology uh, yeah. from, uh, so, from, so from it, your So company, the calculations right? they did were as authentic as they could be in a computer simulation. They did such a good job, so when they were done, they were actual engineers, they said, okay, we'll hire you, and then build it. So they spent half a year extra, then they designed the molds for it and actually built it. The last picture I have of Federico, the Italian guy, uh, is he's sitting in on the floor in the chassis, to, uh, in the monocoque together with Alfredo and, and, and doing a champagne. Uh, champagne in it. Yeah. <laughs> and then he left home, he went home because he, he got a job at Dallar uh, making Formula One Dallara, cars. Okay. But Alfredo, the Spanish guy, stayed on at the project and became our chief engineer. Actually, he has designed this car together with me and our partner in, in the project. So that was the initial step. That was the monocoque that actually started the project. And how did you come by the running uh, gear then? We've been using Lotus as an inspiration because it's lightweight cars also. They drive really well. So we looked into what engines are the Lotus using and they're using a Toyota engine. So that was actually our first choice also because it was a natural aspirated engine and we wanted to put on a, a special supercharger called the uh, Rotrix, which is a Danish invention. So that okay. fitted well with the Danish product yeah. to put that <laughs> on. Um, but then Toyota stopped selling engines for manufacturers. Rear frame, everything was dimensioned and fitted around this uh, Toyota installation. So we had to redesign it. And we went back and said, okay, what was our second choice? If it wasn't for the Toyota, uh, that was a Ford, Ford 1.6 EcoBoost engine. The reason why we didn't choose it was because it was with a turbo. Yeah, and and the, the turbo is really warm <laughs> when it's running. And we wanted to do the full rear of the car in carbon fiber also. We had to skip the rear frame in carbon fiber and do a, a steel uh, frame instead. You can do it in carbon fiber, it just gets extremely expensive and very complicated yeah. at a point where it doesn't make sense anymore, at least with the cost that we want to stay within. So we ended up on the Ford engine, which we are really, really happy about it. It works, works yeah, so they're, well. They're great engines and they have a lot of aftermarket support yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, can, you can get a lot of stuff for them. Now, if I see the numbers, what that car does, then... 
Yeah, it uh, isn't that disappointing. No, no, no. <laughs> when you tell people that can get it with 225 or 270 and up to 300 horsepower, that doesn't impress people. A regular car has uh, 300 horsepower. Yeah, 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 but it doesn't weigh 600 kilos, and that's the difference. 600 kilos. Yeah. It's so that's what makes it fun. That's the yeah, power then, to weight ratio. And then with the, with the suspension on it and stuff. It, yeah, it's built like a race car. It, uh, it has, a of, car. Uh, <laughs> has double wishbones everywhere. It has small spherical bearings instead of rubber uh, bushings, uh, bushings etc. So it's very precise in the handling and steering. It drives really well. And it looks mean. That's what I really like about it. <laughs> what do you think about tomorrow then? What kind of times is it going to do? Uh, in wet, wet conditions, not good. We don't have the weight, so it's really hard to, to get a good grip in rainy and wet conditions. And then you have too much power to bring yeah, into the... Yeah, it's just spinning all over. Yeah. Okay. So, so we need a dry track. It doesn't look too promising, but, but we cross our fingers. And yeah, we cross our fingers that it's at least a couple of hours of dry weather. Uh, that could be nice. Dry yeah. weather. <laughs> Let's see. But otherwise, we got some tires for rain, and then we'll go and have some fun there. Yeah. We'll be back with Tim later in the video, but first we went to Spa, where Nikolai Gamborg shows us what this carbon machine can do. Three laps each with a professional driver in it, and it was just crazy. You go up there and he just pins that throttle and you fly up that mountain. He took me out on that damn track and he just slapped that agile around and it was so awesome. The brake force in that thing, I mean, I was buckled in. I got slammed into the seat belts and then slammed to the left. And it was such an experience. Yes! Oh, what a machine! What a machine! I waited outside and I filmed him passing by and then it just started pouring. This is going to be a really, really wet lap. It started raining and cars were in front of us and they are weaving and you get the spray in your face and it just makes for an even more raw experience, you know? I think it's the closest I'm gonna get to a Formula One feeling in, in my life, I think. It was just the perfect mix of circumstances for an unforgettable drive, those three laps. So you got skills, man. Uh, Not one. Now you can scare him. <laughs> if you want, you want. And the rain didn't stop. And then it was my turn. You drive out. The moment that thing accelerates. Such an amazing experience. The sound of the intake next to your head. Feel the helmet pushing up. The helmet just wants to leave your head because of the wind. The massive amount of water that's thrown into your face. It's just so fast. Even in the wet, we just outcornered every car. Yeah, it's crazy. Just a crazy experience and I love it. The car just, just silenced me. Enjoying the moment, the track, the car, enjoying Nikolai's skills. It's an amazing experience. The whole experience, it's just so awesome. And especially on a track like Spa. It was just an amazing experience. And an experience it was. There's a full video of Nikolai driving a solo lap on a drier track in the description. For now, let's get back to House of Speed, where Tim will tell us more of the story about this Danish little demon. We started off only having the, the carbon fiber monocoque and then we put wheels and uh, engine on and we just wanted to test the monocoque that it was Strong good enough, enough, strong enough. Yeah. You can do a lot of simulations, but it's really hard to do fatigue simulations, for instance. You need to do that on road, right? Exactly. To see all the weird twitching. We ended up driving around in, in this uh, go-kart without bodywork, and we asked the Danish authorities, uh, are we allowed to do this, or how can we do this on road? That we got an acceptance for. We were just driving around, we just put some <laughs> lights on and, and stuff, and then we just went out. And, and then you get from the Danish uh, said, like, uh, you, you have a... Temporary... Uh... We've never been stopped. Oh. 
<laughs> ever. We met the police several times, but they never pulled us over. And I've actually been quite surprised about that because to start with, it was just a go-kart. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> a big go-kart with uh, wheels. There. At least the local police, they knew about us. They knew the crazy they, guys yeah. from Agile, oh, they are allowed yeah. to drive. <laughs> They're trying something again. We need to get it legal. We need to finish it. We need to put some bodywork on. We wanted this to be as extreme and lightweight as possible. So we don't want anything extra. We just want the bodywork to be placed directly on top of the... Yeah, it's like it's on the monocle. It over yeah. it, so... They became one of the design features and also restrictions. We had a hard time getting a design we were happy about. We went through five iterations of designs before we started getting to a point where we liked it. These bulbs out for, for the lights, they were yeah. not here original, but for legal matters, we had to move out the lights 400 millimeters or 450 millimeters from the outer point. Oh, okay. And we, we simply, when they were in here, we couldn't overcome that requirement. So that's why that came out. But we actually like it today because it gives it a bit yeah, of... It gives uh, it more. Yeah. So stuff happens sometimes. You're being forced to do yeah, it by, by regulations, etc. Right? And the same with the rear lights. We are just within, so we have had to position two of them to get the lights as we like. But it, it gives it a quite a nice... Uh, yeah, I really uh, like the look uh, of it. You know? it. The big diffuser yeah. at the back. Yeah. So it's quite efficient. Can actually with the diffuser you can you can move downforce very far uh, forward. Also, uh, where the rear wing is located here and the front wing is very located in the front, then the diffuser gives you a much bigger area to to play within downforce wise. What we have designed is aero dynamic wise is to, to get a uh, balance. We have not gone for getting the highest downforce. It's more a matter of making sure that it doesn't change so a low speed corner and a high speed corner doesn't feel differently due to the No, you, you want but consistency over yeah, the whole exactly. range and just the carbon fiber weave I mean this here it's we are carbon fiber people yeah, so I it's know, man, important for us it's, that it's, it's it still... looks uh, looks nice and the quality is good so we're doing this V it's a pain <laughs> to do yeah but but, but it looks I mean, nice yeah, it, it, it. <laughs> That just makes it, in my opinion. It's just. It looks so much better than this. Yeah, because, it's such yeah. a good detail. Yeah. And it's also very satisfying when you have something that works and looks nice. Yeah, yeah Tim, thank you for this uh, enlightening uh, yeah, talk uh, yeah. about this awesome machine. And thanks for this crazy experience. We had a lot to process, so we went home to look back at the Agile and our weekend at Spa. And what a weekend it was. It what was awesome. It was amazing. First of all, House of Speed, just watching the Agile there in the showroom. It's yeah. such an awesome experience. Yeah, man. To, to be there, their hospitality. That Sunday at Spa. What an experience. That was just I mean, was amazing. The petrol head stream that was. First of all, the Agile there, it's in its natural environment where the Danish yeah. demon hunts. It eats corners for breakfast, lunch and dinner and does it every day if you want to. The same way a Jeep is in its natural environment, off the road, I mean, this one this is, is in its environment, on the circuit. <laughs> Even if it's a road legal car, on the circuit, it's in its element. Yeah, that's where it shines, you know. Yeah. The lightweight, the power, the cornering, the downforce, the whole package comes together, you know. And even if it was a damp slash really wet day, that car is just such a weapon, you know. And so much fun, so raw. and. As the name just implies, a, agile as well. <laughs> it's so agile and nimble, and every noise, it just... The car tells you whole stories while driving. You just can't speak while you're in it, because the car is telling a story. I shouted it in the car, and I'm gonna say it again. Oh, what a machine! <laughs> what a machine. What a machine. The Attention amount of perfection. To detail. It's so great. Every little piece is fought after. Such a machine, I mean, awesome. yeah, it was so it's awesome. awesome machine, yeah. It's just a crazy experience and it's an experience machine. And in the summer as well, you can drive it on the streets. Yeah. You can drive it to your favorite track near your hometown and just go to track, literally drive home in the evening with some nice weather. Yeah. And even if it isn't nice weather, just put on your rain jacket, have an awesome adventure. The rain and everything, it made it even more visceral of an yeah. experience, like yeah. water in your face. And then in the corners as well, it slides. And it, it only made it more of an experience. It, yeah, it made it more, yeah. more epic in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> try it. Yeah. Try it, don't to get addicted. Yeah, the power to weight <laughs> ratio is insane it, on that car. It's just Tim and the guys will help you create your dream machine. It's such an awesome company, such an awesome car. And they gave us our petrol head dream. Yeah, it was awesome. We drove Vincent's car on track as well. 
Yeah. With the agile behind it. I mean, that was they closed the freaking spa for two freaking laps. True. Yeah. Yeah. It was just us in the Volvo with our with car the camera rig, rig and the agile behind us on Spa Franco Champ. Awesome. And at that moment, it wasn't raining. It no. was the perfect filming yeah. conditions. As we came in, it started to rain again. And that's also yeah. the magic of Spa. We had every kind of weather there. The weather was so <laughs> unpredictable. Yeah. My conclusion is, if you're really looking for a track car, go take a look at the Agile because it's, it's also road legal and Tim and his guys will take care of you, you know? They're so passionate. And House yeah. of Speed as well with Alexi. And also if you want a Lotus or KTM, go look at them. If you're from the Netherlands or Belgium, they have the passion for those cars. So thanks House of Speed. Thanks Agile. Thanks Nikolai for the awesome driving. It was just, just a crazy experience. Thanks to the circuit of Spa Franco Shaw and especially our uh, steward that was there. I don't remember his name. I'm sorry, sir, if you see this. Thanks for the awesome day and your awesome help as well. Thank you for watching. And give us a thumbs up, please. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And see you in the next episode. In our next episode, we will get a tour at House of Speed. With as guide, the passionate owner, Alexi. We will have a look at Lotus, Caterham and a private collection. Boom. Car door. <laughs>